Hi everybody, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can spawn in an NPC. So basically a, uh, a dummy character who will just kind of stand there. But they are kind of a real Daisy character, so they, they breathe, you can check their pulse, you can kill them. You can load loot onto them so that when you do kill them you can take take the loot off. Um, I'm not going to show you how to spawn in this uh, friendly wolf in this video, I've done one of those already. Um, so the idea is you can spawn in an NPC um, and you can put whatever gear you like onto them. Then if you kill them, um, you can then take all the gear that you've loaded onto them. Now I'm not sure if this is, a this is a really good way of getting gear into the map. It does seem a little bit nasty that you've got to kill these characters because they do bleed and they do grunt and um, shout out in pain as you're punching them or, or shooting them. But anyway, um, it's something you can do. Now, first though, credit where credit is due. My kind of renewed energy for creating these custom uh, spawn videos is come from Balshad. You may well know him from Don Sibley's Discord. But what he's done, he's put all his XML modding uh, um, knowledge uh, for PlayStation, Xbox, and I guess PC2 into one place. Remember, this will work for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. And he's created this great Discord with lots and lots of easy to follow um, tutorials and FAQs that really do um, really do help. And in fact, the one we're going to be going through is called, I think it's placing NPCs. Let's scroll down and find it uh, because we're going to be using it. Making animal herd NPC placement. So that's that's the kind of tutorial we're going to be working through. But you also want to go over to Balshad's PayPal and drop him a couple of bucks for putting this great information together. I'll put the links to the Discord and his PayPal in the description below this video. Now, what I've done as well is I've actually created a um, handy little. A GitHub repository with example uh, code snippets that you can then copy and paste into your relevant XML files so you can see how this works. So probably the best thing to do is over on uh, Balshad's Discord read through you know, what he tells you to do um, and then what we'll do is if you go to my GitHub repository again the link is in the description below the video click on the little green code button and download the zip. Once you've downloaded it, extract it and then open them in your favorite text editor, editor. Highly recommend Notepad++ and you'll have a CFG event spawn snippet, an event snippet and a CFG spawnable types snippet. So, let's have a look at the uh, the event snippet first. So, this is the uh, little bit of code we're going to copy into our events.xml. And this is the one that calls the non-player character, the NPC, into existence. So, as you can see, nominal one. Um, we've called it item NPC one. Remember, the name of an event is critical when you're calling in items or loot. It must be item NPC one. Uh, you could probably do it with loot as well. Loot NPC one or loot character one or loot guard one. Something like that. if it's a vehicle, it's vehicle car one. If it's an animal, um, animals are slightly different. But if it's a building, it's static. Um, Barracks too, you know that sort of stuff. The the first bit of the event name is critical, otherwise it won't work. Now we're only putting this NPC character in one place. If we wanted to put them in multiple places, we could increase the nominal and the min and the max, and then in these um, in the event spawns file, we could create more if, um, positions for them. Lifetime twenty five hundred. So the idea is that this would kind of pop into existence, and um, you can make that longer if you wanted him to stay there for longer. However, the problem with the characters is I think they, they do die. I don't they, st they don't stand there forever. I think they do get hungry and die. So you probably want them to die and then come back to life, maybe. Um, I haven't done that much research into doing it this way because I'm not sure if this is a way I will use the spawn character. I suppose it could be good for target practice, couldn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> I just would prefer if they were just more like dummies and didn't bleed or, or grunt when you hurt them. Ooh. Uh, position fix, limit child, and here we go. Child loot max zero, loot min zero. Because we don't, because you know, characters don't spawn in with loot around them, do they? Max min one, because we want one, and 
we're calling on Survivor M. Mirak. Now, if we go back to Belshazzar's Discord, he has got a list of all the Survivor names. So these are all NPCs that you can spawn in. They all look different. So these are all the random characters that you get when you start Daisy. You know, when you, when you spawn in as a new Survivor. So that's the event. Next, we want to give it a location, don't we? So this is what you'll find in the CFG event spawn snippet. So you'll notice the event name matches the event from the event snippet, item NPC1, and we've given it an X and a Z position. Now you get these from the iSurvive map. So if you move your character, your cursor around on the iSurvive map, you'll see at the bottom of the screen the coordinates are changing, and you want to zoom all the way in to where you want to put your character, and then you can type Control C, that copies it to the clipboard, and then you could paste it in, and then you can copy the X over the X and the Z over the Z and then get, then get rid of those and then that will be the position where your NPC is going to spawn in A is the rotation of the character so you can make them face in different ways you'll notice that there's no Y because Y would be the um, the vertical axis so that's how above or below the ground the character would be but the game handles that automatically for us it puts what we spawn in our event hopefully standing on the ground I guess it should probably stand on top of a building if there's a building there. Now, the other thing we need to add in is a entry in the CFG spawnable types. There's a CFG spawnable types snippet, and basically I've just copied over um, Balshad's one here. And what this does is this puts um, uh, military uniform and military gear, uh, an M4 and M4 attachments in his bag, um, so that when he spawns in, he'll have all that kit. So in order, and you can change this to whatever you like. So in order to to add this to your um, your server, you'll want to fire up your uh, your servers. Uh, maybe you use FTP. I'm using Nitrido as an example here. You want to go into the web interface. You want to go into the file browser on the left hand side. Go into the missions. Uh, Daisy offline. Uh, sorry, Chenerous Plus is Chenerous. Enoch would be. Um, Livonia. If you're on PC, you've got to dig down a little bit further to get to the missions file. And then in the main directory here, this is where you'll find the CFG spawnable types. There it is. So you want to download that one and you'll find the CFG event spawns. So you want to click that and you want to download that one. And then if we go into the DB folder or the DB directory here, you want to download the events. And you want to again open those up in your favorite text editor. And you want to copy the, the relevant part from the snippet into the main file, like I've done here. Just stick it at the top. So we've got Survivor Mirak in uh, CFG Spawnable Types. We've got Item NPC at the top of the events. And we've got the coordinates for Item NPC 1 at the top of the CFG Event Spawns. Save those files. Go back here, and now you upload. So you click on Upload, upload your events file over the top of the existing one. Go back to the main missions directory and upload the CFG of um, the config uh, event spawns and the CFG spawnable types.xml over the top of the existing ones. And then just click restart server. And your server will restart. And you should, as long as you've done everything right, end up with an NPC standing there that you can then kill and take his stuff. Yes. <laughs> anyway, there we go. So again, big thanks to um, Balshad. Go over, visit his Discord, join his Discord. Really good stuff. There's all the information you could need, and um, it is very, very good stuff indeed. Anyway, that's enough from me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have, hit like if you want to see more, press subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.